Sean Sewell with the Ingimit.com podcast. Really excited to trap my friends at Jensen and Nikolai from Umbra Sunglasses. These guys right here, they're armless sunglasses. I've been using my pair for about two or three weeks now. Really dig it. And you're going to dig their creation story in these two gents right here. So, guys, welcome to the Ingimit.com podcast. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having I'm us. Stoked to be here. I'm stoked to have you guys, too. We had such a fun conversation before I push record. A lot in common. Um, we're all three split boarders. Got the split board right there. And they're in beautiful, sunny right now, Washington State, while it's snowing sideways here in Colorado. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Nikolai's video right there. He's got the sun coming through the great trees right there. It's gorgeous. So gorgeous. So, gentlemen, uh, we have a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Uh, let's talk about the, the origin story for your company. How did this all come about? How were armless sunglasses created? Well, I guess like sunglasses were always kind of a frustrating thing for me uh, growing up. You know, like I, I tend to lose things all the time, so I lost them all the time. They, they would hurt my, my head when I wear them with a hat. I got a small head, like a small head, dense brain. But uh, yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, so it just like sunglasses never fit my face. They're always sliding down my nose. And then I'd like set them down and forget them. And I was on this camel safari in the Thar Desert in India in 2011. And I needed a pair of sunglasses. So I bought a pair of sunglasses from this little optical shop in New Delhi, took them out into the desert. And like three hours into the expedition, someone sat on them when we would stop for lunch and the side arms broke off. Oh. Yeah. And I needed sunglasses out there. And so what I did, I just took a piece of twine and basically like MacGyvered this like cord around the back and wrapped the cord around the back of my head. And I wore them like that for the rest of the trip. And we were like racing these camels down these dunes and jostling all around and they stayed secure, but they were really comfortable because I dialed in that tension to where it wasn't super tight around my head. They just kind of like perfectly balanced on my face. And so I replaced that twine with a leather cord and I wore that same pair of MacGyver sunglasses for five years. And Nikolai and I went to college together. And so I got back from India, like, and Nikolai saw these in college and he was kind of like, he was obsessed with them and would steal them from me at parties and whatnot. And I'd have to track them down to get them back. And he was, he has a small head too, also an incredibly dense brain. And so he was one of the only, my only friends who could actually try these on and wear them and see how comfortable and how awesome they were. This is all true. <laughs> it's, all, it's all true. You heard it here first. I swear. <laughs> and um, yeah, so then I, we, I kind of like toyed with the idea, you know, like enough people like would come up to me on the street and just notice this, this sunglass with, these, with this leather cord and be like, hey, who makes those? Where, do I, where can I get a pair? And, and peers and friends would ask for their own handmade pairs to the point where I was like, you know what? This really solves an inherent issue that everyone has with, with their sunglasses and like everyone's experiences, everyone has experienced those frustrations before. And, and, and these just kind of solve those issues. And if you have a product like that solves these issues, like there's going to be a demand, there's going to be people that want it. Yeah. Um, it's really been like 250 years since sunglasses were invented and there hasn't been like a significant design change that like addresses all of the issues that have existed since they've been invented. So it's like anything that's, in that position is like is ripe for change yeah very well stated and there's tons of sunglass companies out there like like it's it's wild but they all you know they just like are using different materials have like a different like marketing like uh route or or you know like they're they have a lens technology that they're touting but like nothing's inherently fundamentally different with the design yeah, it's all like and, the same technology with a different brand. It's all, it, the, the brand's the biggest differentiator other than like slight material differences. Sure, that makes sense. I test a lot of sunglasses and that is 100% accurate. Well, that's really impressive. I, and again, when these came in, I at first, when I put them on, I my, my wife what was different about them. I, she was looking at them like, she's like, those are very thin frames and arms in them. And we showed her that they're not arms at all. And then uh, I let her try them, and she has a small head. I have a medium-sized head. And I let, I, let, I let her colleagues of mine try his on, and they seem to fit a wide variety of, of heads. It's really cool. Yeah, we kind of ran with one, that, that classic aviator shape for the first year and a half of being in business. And 
and it was it's just wild how that shape specifically fits so many different head shapes and sizes we have two sizes but um like yeah between those two sizes with that same frame shape we like it's it's surprising how many people look good in them and then that cord's adjustable so you can adjust it to any size yeah i noticed when i first tried it on i had it too tight and like you said in literature get a little bit looser and it does stay in place i even did a bunch of kettlebell swings the very first day i used them outside and they stayed in place which that's awesome yeah, people tend to get them and crank them down on their face like goggles. And Nicola and I just cringe when we see that and like see it happening in person because we're like, no, like that's like that's that defeats the purpose of having this light floating pair of sunglasses on your face. Yeah, you're not really supposed to feel them when you're wearing when you're wearing them correctly. You should be able to take the frames off your off your brow about half an inch um, and like barely even feel the cord when when they're on properly. So. It's, it's just like, that's one of the biggest things uh, about them is just the comfort factor. It feels like you're wearing nothing at all. It's like a polarized halo. Yes, and polarized is my favorite kind of, of optics. Let's talk about the, the working with uh, Carl Zeiss lenses. Like the, I've never seen sunglasses have Zeiss. The camera I'm shooting on right now has a Zeiss lens. What allured you guys to or brought you guys to? That's why you look so good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looking, coming in crystal clear, Sean. Um, <laughs> No, the Z landing Zeiss was actually pretty monumental for us, I think, because it gave us some validation to our concept. So we launched an Indiegogo campaign uh, through a crowdfunded campaign um, in 2018. And we had a really tough time finding a lens manufacturer that would work with us just because we were, you know, look at this, like, we were nothing. We were just an idea, essentially. And, and no, no like big time high quality lens manufacturer wanted to bring us on because it was kind of more like a like a like a liability at that point. And um, we just ended up getting in touch. I don't even know how we just smiling and dialing. We got a, a hold of this rep for Zeiss. that was just a little bit older than us at the time. And he was like, you know what, guys, like, I really like this idea. I like where you guys heads at. Like, I'd love to I'd love to help you guys out. And so he brought us on and we like, you know, got an account with Zeiss and it just really validated the product because people saw that Zeiss name, which is like, you know, it's, it has some clout behind it. And, and it, it like that whole armless sunglass, like it was no longer like it, like it felt gimmicky because we were using that like premium lens that comes with a pair of arm bits. Excuse oh, me. For sure. <laughs> well stated. Yeah, I, I dig it. Uh, yeah, Zeiss is super high quality optics. And again, I had never seen it in the shades before. And um, trust me, I've, I've done reviews on many, many sunglasses and very good quality ones at that. But yeah, getting Zeiss in there, legit. I mean, yeah. Uh, we'll speak more. You have three different lenses. Is that right? Yeah, we've got gray, brown, and a yellow. But we also have clear blue blockers. And we have like a whole custom RX program that offers, you know, prescription, uh, glacial tints, uh, and just like custom tints and coatings and treatments and stuff like that. So we can pretty much do just about anything now. Oh, that's a huge talking point right there. I, I wear blue blocking glasses when, I, when I'm writing, obviously, like most mm -hmm. people should. And having prescription compatible options, that's huge. Good for you guys. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. People really appreciate it. And it's one thing we just like, it's always, it's like one of our most popular questions and it's hard to, um, it's definitely just like a challenge to announce that kind of program effectively all the time. Cause you know, you're focusing on your main business, but then that's a, that's a critical piece that a lot of people want. Oh, for sure. Yeah. My, my wife wears prescription sunglasses and I mean, this is a, a huge amount of people you can serve with still having the great functionality of the armless uh, I'm I think for, for like RX, it's honestly even better because those are the people who are, you know, they're having to wear their glasses all the time. So like I can imagine, you know, they're, if, if I get pain after only an hour or 20 minutes of wearing normal glasses from, from the arms, you know, someone that's wearing them all day, day in and day out, and they're probably more used to it than I am, but they're probably so grateful. <laughs> Yeah. It's actually wild. We've had a uh, we've had people who have had like brain tumors and had to have uh, you know like surgery on their skulls and it's very sensitive in those places. 
and th- they have to wear glasses and they had reached out found us warned them and been like these changed my life like i used to get headaches i used to be miserable because my glasses were just like really causing like serious pain in my head and now these umbras you know like i don't feel them it's 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 pretty incredible yeah we never we never thought that like a product like this would have that much of an impact on some people that's yeah those kinds of stories are great motivation to just like keep on keeping on and you know do what we do oh that's so rewarding guys so good cool to hear that that's amazing and and the name uh can you explain to the readers where the name comes from yeah um so ombra means shade in italian um we were initially like going to source and like make umbers in Italy. And that's just, uh, but like that's, and then I'm, ha- my mom's Italian. So that's also where that comes from. And, and it's just a beautiful word. And ombras.com was available, <laughs> was an available domain. So yeah, we just added a Z after ombra. So ombra means shade in Italian. We also plant 20 trees for every pair of ombras we sell um, through a, like a pretty substantial tree planting uh, partnership. And so, you know, we shade for your eyes, shade for degraded landscapes. That's kind of like that whole like ombra encompassing s- backstory to the name. But uh, yeah, the big one was just like a five letter word ombras.com was available on, on GoDaddy. And so like, hey, that's a sweet name. We can brand that. Let's go for it. <laughs> and, it and it looks dope. It's like, a, you know, the wor- it's a word that kind of exudes quality. And, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a nice it's a nice sounding word. And from the very beginning, you, you kind of like faced with a choice. Do you focus on like the low price option or do you focus on like high quality premium stuff? And from the get go, we, we really like, that was a big challenge we talked about all the time and asked all the smartest people we knew for advice on. And we decided that, um, you know, to make some things, to, to focus on like the cheaper, the, the less premium part of the market, it's just like, it's not always the best place to start because especially as a new concept, because it almost kind of like takes away from the clout and like validation, like Jensen was saying, it's like similar with the Zeiss name. Um, it just, it, you just want to set yourself up for success when you're creating a new idea and communicating that for the first time and creating something that was nice, that was going to last a long time. That was quality. It was just, it was super high on the agenda. I love it. Yeah. And it does look good. It's a good name. Ombres, for sure. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Like older people have, have struggled with it. They're always like ombras or ombras. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for setting them straight on that for sure. Yeah. I love the idea. I didn't, I just dawned on me during this conversation about shades and providing natural shade. What a great collaboration there. Is that Eden uh, reforestation project you're working with? Yeah, exactly. So they they have nurseries in Madagascar, and we specifically donate uh, a portion of our proceeds to plant mangrove trees in Madagascar, which have which they mangrove trees sequester more carbon than any other tree on the planet, oh, wow. and they also like have more environmental and socioeconomic impact, like beneficial impacts than any other tree. Did not know that. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Good yeah, we've planted almost 300,000 trees since we launched. Uh, let, well, we've been in stock for like two years, pretty much a little bit more than two years. So in that time, it's been it's been all, over 300,000 trees. That is incredible. <laughs> oh, I love it. And there's an update too. I in the review I shot for the the, the shades, I said 330 times uh, carbon negative. It's actually a little bit higher. Is that right? Slightly. Yeah, it's actually 1,383 times uh, the carbon that it takes is sequestered um, sequestered from the 20 trees planted. So, yeah, we just reran our carbon analysis and there were a few components that we've that we've changed and just di- dove a little bit deeper. And we found that uh, that we had underestimated that offset. And it's just like, yeah, it's, it's something that we're really, really proud of. It's it's, you know, shipping plastic around the world and manufacturing goods, you know, elsewhere. And um, it's really important to, to offset those, those prints. And like, we wouldn't feel good about, about building a product and creating a brand uh, without, without offsetting that. Absolutely. At least in a, way, in a very big way. Wow. Oh guys, that's incredible. I love it. I love it. Well, let's talk a little more about you guys. 
What do you like to do for fun? Oh man, that's we love we love to be outside. Like we're always outside. That's a big one for us. Um, I love to. I, snowboarding's huge. That's why I can survive Seattle winters for sure. Because when it's raining in Seattle, that means it's snowing in the mountains. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, play soccer uh, pretty competitively here in Seattle, and then like just doing surf trips and that sort of thing as well is kind of that's the jam. Oh, I love it. That's great. That is great. And uh, yeah, I love to just travel and learn languages and. Um, yeah, just like explore new cultures and, and, uh, yeah, pretty much anything outside. I'm kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. Um, <laughs> I just bought a, I just bought a, a short bus. So that's going to be my latest and greatest project that is going to take up all my time this summer, but I'm stoked about it. It's going to be a big learning experience. I'm sure it isn't before the video, uh, we recorded, I saw the bus. That looks freaking awesome, man. I'm stoked for you. Super. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, let's talk about the, the company. Uh, so you have currently you have three different models, right? The classic. The, we do. Uh, what's the other one? Yeah. So we have the classic, which is that aviator we were talking about. We have the Dolomite, which is a circular kind of more like mountain looking frame. And it's also got some built in side visors on it. And then the Ligero is like a more rectangular shape that looks really good on everyone. Nice. Nice. And we're putting the finishing touches on two to three new styles that that we're hoping to launch, you know, sometime this year, towards the end of the year. Um, but yeah, it's just we're just at the beginning of of like our product and style rollout, so you can expect to, to see a lot more coming out. And then we've we have the Dolomite we launched last year around this time, and we we kind of we actually pre-sold more pairs than we than we made, and so. We're going to come back and stock with those in the next few weeks. And that'll be the first time the Dolomite's kind of ever been fully in stock on numbers.com, which will be great. We're excited about that. And we got a few like special edition colorways we're going to be rolling out uh, this summer as well in the three styles we have, just like small runs of like some really cool colors. Oh, that's awesome. And those Dolomites sound like legit for people like us, especially backcountry skiers and splitboarders for touring and and hikers looking for that little bit extra coverage. Yeah, yeah, they're great. I mean, they're so awesome because you can just, you know, when you're transitioning to go ride, if you don't want to ride in your glasses and you want to wear goggles, you just throw them around your neck and they're they're always there. Throw them in your pocket or your jacket or your pants, and they're that you don't have to worry about them. They're just like they're just like my favorite one of my favorite pieces of gear up on the mountain. That's awesome. That is really great. And then so uh, the three models and three different lens choices all size lenses, which is freaking awesome. And then um, limited edition color runs and the Dolomites are going to be back in stock, which is fantastic. This is good stuff. And then some other things in the future to look forward to. Uh, any anticipated uh, release dates or projected ideas on that? Um, I would say, so we're, like I said, two new frame styles, two to three new frame styles, and they're going to be, coming out towards the end of the year. We're going to try and have them ready for the holidays. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that. Oh, that is awesome, guys. Oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. And uh, the other thing, too, is we're we're actually, you know, we're, we've been around for two to three years, and it's pretty much just been Jensen and I uh, as the full-time kind of running the show. And we work with a, with a bunch of other people, like, collaborating on projects here and there. But in terms of full-time, uh, we're, we're going to be hiring uh, some more people and expanding the team. So, um, you know, if you, if you're interested in working for a, a dope company that has a lot of fun and, and gets after it, we, uh, please reach out and tell us how you think you can help. We probably got a spot for you. That is awesome. And we'll, our listeners and viewers, we will put that link in the show notes. Definitely take it up to work with these guys. I've had a pleasure chatting with them for like at least an hour before we push record. These guys are awesome. Really great people. I think you'll enjoy working with them. Heck yeah. Is there anything else you guys awesome. want to cover um, on the brand, on the, the shades? That was pretty good. Little, That was hard hitting. I I think we kind of got it all right, Nikolai? Yeah, I think so. I'm just, I'm trying to think what else. It's like, there's so many parts of the story that you can just dive in on. But to, as a high level overview, I think we just got it all. Excellent. Excellent. 
Well, I, I really appreciate getting to know you guys more, and I've really been enjoying your shades, and the review will be up live um, here next few days as well in time with this podcast. And uh, it's so cool to actually do a podcast in your guys' native element with the trees in the background right there with Nikolai and, and uh, seeing where you guys are doing this. And in two years, what you guys have accomplished and what you're doing for the environment, it's just amazing, guys. Totally amazing. We Thanks, couldn't man. be more stoked to to do what we're doing, and and yeah, we're we're really grateful for everyone's support, and just yeah, stoked. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Well, I will have links below to the website, and then your guys' email, in case anyone wants to come work with you, which I think that would benefit them. And um, as always, I appreciate learning more about you guys. And if anybody has more questions, I'll have the links below for the website. And then, of course, a link to the review so you can see how I use them with my, my dogs up in the mountains and such for splitboarding and touring. And um, as always, thank you for your time, Nikolai and Jensen. Sean, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, pleasure. Great chatting with you. My pleasure. And Gamer.com viewers, listeners, and YouTube subscribers, uh, thank you for checking us out. This is Sean Sewell with Gamer.com. Until next time, take care.